Another precious evening. Let me appreciate my friends who are online right now. We we are on on uh, we are on part seven. I think part seven of the mystery of the soil. And uh, today we are doing part two, part B of do not give the reason or do not give the land the reason to vomit you. Let me appreciate Benjamin Kiria from Zambia. God bless you, man of God. I thank you for your faithfulness. You have been very faithful, man of God, and I want to appreciate you so much. Even last time you tried to use another account and you could not be able to catch up very well. But at least I'm grateful that we can be able to catch. Sam Kibet, God bless you for connecting. May the Lord do you good in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know. I just need to appreciate few people who are connecting with us online right now. You can tell us where you are and uh, we will appreciate you. We will appreciate your presence and the Lord will greatly bless you. We want to honor you. We want to just appreciate you for coming around and uh, be able just to join us and the Lord bless you. We, we are in a moment of worship and I want to believe that the Lord is going to bless us in this moment. God bless you. God bless you. Just tell us where you're watching us from. Tell us where you're connecting from, wherever you are. We will be glad to appreciate you and uh, the Lord will greatly bless you. Just tell us where you are, where you are tuning from, where you're watching us from and uh, we will be able to appreciate you. God bless you for all that are coming online. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just tell us where you are. Let us know where you're tuning us from. And uh, God will bless you. The song says that, he said that whatever we ask or whatever we need, he will give us unto us. So we need to ask God to give us the land. We need the Lord to give us nations. We need God to give us cities. In that every place that we go, the favor of God will go before us. And when the favor of God will go before us, we will not be disappointed. We will not be ashamed. We will not be a disgrace. So keep on joining and uh, if possible you can be able to share out the feed. Uh, share out the feed to your friends. Invite those you know so that they can be able to join us. And uh, we'll be glad to appreciate them as well. Because we know that God is, is up to something. The Lord is up to something. The Lord is up to something. So... Let us know where you're connecting from and uh, we'll be glad to appreciate you. Let us know where you are. Let us know where you're connecting from and uh, we'll be glad to appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you all the honor. Be exalted and be lifted. Receive all the praise. Receive all the honor, God. Receive all the preeminence for everything that you are doing on this telecast. For those that love my Father in a special way, you are ministering and speaking to. Lord, we pray that you bless them. We pray that, Lord, you release your anointing over this place in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for everybody that is coming. Thank you for Jerry M. Courtney. Thank you for bringing Jerry M. Courtney. God bless you, Jerry M. We thank you, Lord, for all this because it is for your glory in the name of Jesus. Even as we share the word of God with them, we pray that, Lord, my Father, receive all the preeminence, receive all the honor, receive all the praise, receive all the adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. We break everything that is supposed to be broken. What may try to stand at the gate 
We break it in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand against it. We destroy it in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, my Father, let your presence be manifested on this telecast in the name that is above every name. Lord, I worship you. The cry of our heart is that we must worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Mesha Kaswan. God bless this great servant of God. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I'm, I'm still waiting for a few more people to join us. Then we're going to go straight to the reading of the word of God. Just tell us where you're watching from. And uh, we, we, we are going to, we are going straight to the word of God. God bless you for all those that are coming on board. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you for everybody that is coming on board. God bless you. 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 Ask for the nations. We ask for the nations. We ask for the nations. We ask for the nations, Lord. We ask for the nations. We ask for the nations. We ask for the nations. We ask for the nations in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Uh, we are going into the word of God, but before I share the word of God, I want to give you a very slight testimony, a very small testimony. But I have been doing this program for the last since Tuesday last, last week. Tomorrow it will be the seventh day. Tomorrow it will be the seventh day. A guy called me. A guy called me. In fact, he came into my inbox and he called me. He told me that he's not on Facebook, but he can be able to access YouTube. And this guy faithfully he has been receiving every message that I've been preaching because immediately after I preach on Facebook, I have to post it on YouTube. And this guy has been very faithfully, very faithfully, very faithful. In fact, yesterday and on Saturday, I did him injustice because I was not online. And the reason was that the place where we are, there was no electricity, so we could not do the program. But the guy called. And today, he received the message we did at lunch hour. At 5 p.m. also, he has received a message. He has received seven messages that we have been doing non-stop. What am I trying to communicate to a pastor or a man of God or a minister of the gospel? On this Facebook, we don't preach to those who are watching. We preach to those who are listening. And not everybody that is watching can listen. It is only those who listen that the message will bring an impact into their lives. And sometimes you realize that there are not many. This guy has been one of the people that has made me to be on this online every day. Even if I don't see anybody. But this one, I'll be faithful to him because I know what I'm doing is an impact that I'm causing in his life. And in fact, he has called me, he wants us to meet because there are things that I've been teaching on this mystery of the soil that he wants us to sit down and discuss so that I can be able to help out, uh, to help him. If you're a pastor, don't be discouraged when nobody's following you. When you preach, there are two types of people on this online. The first kind of a person is that one who is constantly watching you right now, like the few that are watching and listening what I'm speaking. The second group of a person is the one who will follow this message later. The third group of person, they'll be able to find this message either on YouTube or some days later. So when you do what you're doing, if you're preaching online, 
or if you are ministering of you are doing anything you are not just doing it for today but you are doing it for tomorrow and for the sake of the days to come so when this guy called me it gave me the courage to make sure that every time i must come online and after i speak after i preach every message i preach i must make sure that i download it then after downloading it must go direct to youtube so that the man can be able to follow up he is not on facebook number two uh, what you do, do best out of what you can do. This is the opportunity that God has given you to package yourself. To package yourself. If you've got, if you've got opportunity, the same way you'll be invited or the same way you'll be going to preach on your own pulpit is the same way you need to, represent, to present yourself when you stand before people online to preach. Come on, you cannot go before people with a t-shirt. You cannot go before people with a vest. You cannot go with before people with a shirt. Because millions and millions of people are watching. And remember, internet does not forget. Internet does not forget. So everything that you preach on this internet will always follow you later. So don't just take it as a casual thing that you need to pass time. No, the same way you'll be in your church or the same way you'll be invited somewhere. If it means there is one of my brothers is in Akuru, it's called Junior Leicido. One morning, one morning, I had just woken up and I wanted to put on a t-shirt and I wanted just to do a casual service. When I logged in, I realized the guy had put on a suit not just a suit, but the best of his suit so that he could do online. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it completely changed my mind that particular day. I had to go back to my wardrobe. I had to pull out my best suit. I had to pull out my tie. I had to pull out my best shirt. Then I went to preaching. And from that day, I realized that this is a service like any other service. Number three, when you come to a, such a service like this, a man of God might have a word. Remember, imagine if, if you are preaching in your own church, then somebody comes into your service, sneaks for 10 minutes, walks away. Then sneaks in again for 10 minutes, walks away. Then sneaks in for 10 minutes, walk away. To the person who walks away, they miss something. But to you, they are walking away from it is a grief. They are grieving you because this is a service like any other service. The only part with it, we have to appreciate those who are coming in because we are able to see. Thank you so much, Regi Mwangi. God bless you. George Baraka, God bless you. It is like any other service. And maybe God can use this media to speak something that could have transformed your life. But because you are not patient, because you just need to see the way the preacher is dressed, because you just need to see the preacher studio the way it looks like, because just because you don't take serious, that one clearly demonstrates to us, especially Africans, we do not value the things of God when it comes to the online things. And that is how it demonstrates how we have got what we call human worship. Because human worship is the ability whereby I am loyal to my pastor in his presence. But in their absence, I'm doing my own things. In their absence, I'm not attentive to what they are preaching. In their absence, I don't feel anything. That is why the same way we go to our service is the same way we must be able to connect to any service that we are being preached to. If it is your pastor that is preaching, give him the attention. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes, some they take 45 minutes. You will lose nothing. But at the end of everything, you will gain something. Yesterday, one of my spiritual fathers was preaching. And I realized that the reason why God did not want me to go online, he wanted me to, con to understand that the message that I'm preaching is the message of the time. Bishop Mark Kegoe was preaching yesterday about the healing of the land. 
The same thing I started on Tuesday. He was dealing with it yesterday. But I had to sit down to follow through. And the things my father spoke yesterday, they gave me the courage to know that I'm on the right path. Because there are things you can be speaking and you need an authentication. You need somebody that will clarify them. You need somebody that can say that that is the right direction. And when a father comes in and say, this is the route to go, you feel more confident. So today I want to share with you the word of God. I want you to follow me very closely. I might not finish it today, but also tomorrow I will still follow up on the same until i finish because there is a reason why i want to run this series up to the end maybe after it i'll write a book out of it but i want you to follow so that maybe there is your peace that god wants you to benefit maybe there is something that god wants you to apply in your life maybe there is something that god wants you to learn so that after this message you go and apply it in your daily life then it begins to work for you because you cannot learn <laughs> you cannot run into what you have not learned you cannot run into what you have not learned and that is why god wants to give you the knowledge of this message so that you can be able to understand which area have i gone wrong what are the things that i need to improve so that the land cannot vomit me Thank you, Bishop Levin Jiru. I can see you there. God bless you, Mama. In Leviticus chapter number 19, Leviticus chapter number 19, today allow me, I'm going to do more of teachings and uh, we are going to read more of scriptures. So if you have got your pen, book, you can be able to write somewhere so that these things will be able to help you. I'm not preaching somebody's message. No. This message, when my friend, uh, Reverend Chris Atemo, invited me to Kisumu to preach, we were doing change experience in 2017. I had nothing to preach. When I got into the hotel, the Lord told me I wanted to speak the mystery of the soil. I went to the pulpit. I spoke the first session. I got back to the hotel. God gave me another scripture. And every day I was being given a scripture, a scripture, a scripture. Until the last day of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the change experience, seven days, it was a full-loaded sermon with experiences, with practicalities, with things that I've applied, with things that I've seen them work. And if I share with you these things, if you get them right, they are going to work for you. Let's read Leviticus chapter 18. The Bible says in verse number 20, verse 25, verse 24. If you are there, say amen. Leviticus chapter number 18, verse number 24. Sometimes it's good to wait those who are preaching. To. Thank you. Say amen. If you got it, say amen. Leviticus, it says, do not defile yourselves with any of these things, for by all these things, the nations are defiled. For by all these things, the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. For the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it, and the land vomits out its inhabitant. The land vomits out its inhabitant. Let me give you verse number 27. For all this abomination the men of the land have done, who are before you, and thus the land is defied. Verse number 28. Lest the land vomit you out also, when you defiled it, as it vomited out the, the nations that were before you. Maybe somebody can give me the, a different version. Verse number 28. A different version in verse number 28. A different version in verse number 28. The, the, the other one it says that do not give the land the reason to vomit you out. Do not give the land the reason to vomit you out. That is verse number 28 
of Leviticus chapter number 18. Do not give the land the reason to vomit you out. Can I say that one again? Do not give the land the reason to vomit you out. Now, for those who are with me in the afternoon, I spoke some of the things that makes the land to vomit people. Not only inhabitants, but also we as the sons and daughters of the land. Because the intention of God, for example, I want to use this very simple example. In the old days when we were still young, our parents used to keep kettles. My mother used to have a cow. And this cow, every evening we could go into it to milk it. And it used to be a cow that used to have a kick. But if it has eaten well, if it were, if we had taken care of it very well, that evening we were going to comfortably milk it without any struggle. But anytime we abuse the cow, we don't feed it, we don't take care of it, we don't make sure that it has taken enough water, that evening it was going to be a struggle. So one day I went to try to milk it and my mom was not around by then. Then when I went and tried to milk it, my brother was holding a lamb, a lamb because we used to, by then we used to have kerosene lamp. So my brother was holding a kerosene lamp and I went in so that I could start milking. The cow was hungry. It got angry. It kicked me. I fell down with the tin that I was going to, I was trying to use to get the milk. The, 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 the lamb fell the other side and we all ran in darkness because the cow was angry. When the land becomes angry, when the land is treated well by the people who dwell on the land, the land will always treat the inhabitants well. But when the land is treated badly, the land will always treat the inhabitants well badly and one of the ways that the land will treat the inhabitants badly is by vomiting them the land when it is angry it reacts sometimes you'll see things like mudslide you will see things like erosion you will see things like floods you will see things like uh, volcanoes you will see things like the land breaking up and swallowing up people because when the land is not treated well, it will treat the inhabitants abnormally. When the land is not treated, uh, when the land is not treated in a normal manner, the land will treat its inhabitants abnormally. Thank you, Alfred Arita. So what you need to understand is that the intention of God. When he created man, the Bible says, and God said that let us create man in our own image and let them have dominion over the earth, over the cattle, and over every creeping thing. And in chapter number 2, when God had created man, chapter 2, verse number 7, the Bible says, and God brought the man, and God brought the man that he had created into the garden of Eden so that he could till it. I looked into the word, the meaning of the word to till. The meaning of the word to till, it comes from the word culture. And the word culture is agriculture. And culture is a mixture of soil and something. Which means that when soil is mixed up with something that adds value to it, the soil becomes productive. So the intention of God to bring man unto the soil so that he can till it was for man to add value unto the soil. But when man does not add value unto the soil, the soil has got no otherwise but to react against man. I'm speaking on the subject, do not give the land the reason to vomit you. There are a few things that I'm going to show you here right now. Thank you, Mili Were. There are a few things that I'm going to show you right now that I'm going to help you of the reasons or the things that make the land to vomit its inhabitants. Number one, 
is when men of the land or when men of the soil fight against the men of God. And when I talk about the men of God, I'm not just talking about any man of God. But a man or a woman of God that carries the grace of the blessed. There are men of God that God has given grace of particular places. And anytime you fight against those men who carry the grace of that particular place. Because it is their grace that sustains a place. No matter how successful you might be. You need a man that has been anointed for the land. Somebody say amen. Prince Habil Odinga, God bless you. No matter how financially stable you are, you always need a man that has been given a special grace for the specific land. That is why when we talk about territories and territories and principalities, they are men and women of God who are principalities in specific places. For example, in a country like South Africa or a country like Kenya, there are men that you cannot attempt to rise a battle against them, no matter who you are. Because if you try to fight against them, the land itself will begin to fight against you. And the first thing the land will do, the land will vomit you. When you get into a place, in order for you to be accepted, the first thing that you need, you need the principalities of that land. When Moses was sent in Egypt, God has anointed him. God has given him all the power. God has given him everything. God has given him the miracles, but God spoke to Moses and told him, before you have to see Pharaoh, make sure you meet the elders, because the elders are the principalities, the elders are the gatekeepers. If they open the door for you, Pharaoh will not be a problem to you. That's why wise people, whenever they come, why is it that when people want to do great businesses in a particular country, things that we talk about bilateral talks, they are not bilateral talks. Those are covenants that are being made by the principalities, by the gatekeepers of those land. That's why a man will come and see the governor of Mombasa. A man will come and see the president of Kenya. A man will come and see the government, the governor of Vega. A man will come and see the governor of Kakamega. Reason is this. They understand that if I have got the gatekeeper into my hand, I will have everything that is in the city or everything that is in the land. Because once the gatekeeper opens a gate, Nobody can close a gate against you. So the first thing that makes the land to reject or vomit its people is when they fight the men and women of God who carries the grace of the land. In Numbers chapter 16, verse number 28. Numbers chapter 16, verse number 28. Thank you for connecting. Numbers chapter 16 verse 28 the Bible says and Moses said by this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works for I, for I have not done them by my own will if these men die natural like all men or if they are visited by the common fate of all men then the Lord has not sent me then the Lord has not sent me but if the Lord creates a new thing and the earth opens up its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them. And they go down alive into the pit. Then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. This is Korah. They were fighting against the servant of God, Moses. <laughs> Listen to me. The problems of your pastor have got nothing to do with you. Am I helping somebody here? The problems of your pastor have got nothing to do with you. A man of God is always either vindicated by God or judged by God. Don't be the one that sits on the judgment seat to judge a pastor. 
Because anytime you rise against a pastor, anytime you rise against a man of God, what you are simply saying is this, that act, open up your mouth and swallow me alive. And some of us, if you are swallowed alive by the earth, there's no way your voice can be heard on the land. In fact, if you walk across the people who have been swallowed by the soil, they are people who are one somebody. But because some of them, they were insulting pastors. Some of them, they were the ones that make the life of the pastors difficult. Some of them, they make the life of the preacher so hard. Today, if you are told this man, he used to be a billionaire, you cannot believe. Because some of them, they are, drive, they are cycling a bicycle. Some of them are running, they are begging. Some of them, they have got no food. Some of them, they have got nothing to eat. Because they were fighting a man of God. Anytime you fight a man of grace, we find that Moses said, if these people do not die a natural death, let me show you. And now it came to pass, verse 31, now it came to pass as he finished speaking all these words, that the ground split apart under them, and the earth opened its mouth. The earth has got a mouth. <laughs> the earth has got a mouth. The earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them. That's when you find somebody was, 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 was trending. That trending habit disappears. You wonder where did the money go? Where did the cars go? Where were the houses that he was talking about and bragging about go? When the earth swallows you, nobody can remember you. There are people today we don't think even if they exist. Follow their history. Follow them closely. The Bible says, uh -huh. Now it came to pass as he finished speaking, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households, and all the men with Korah, with all their goods. So they all and those with them went down alive into the pit. The earth closed over them. And they perished from among the assembly. Then all Israel who were around them fled at their cry. For they said, let the earth swallow us up also. And the fire came up from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. Who are doing what? Offering incense. When they fight against grace. Can I tell you something? The grace you do not understand, don't fight it. I'm seeing people, I'm seeing people, you know some people, some people I don't know if they are looking for a curse or what. Somebody used to be under a certain pastor. And let this message reach to that young man in South Africa, in Durban. He used to be under a particular pastor. They were working together. I could see them in Cape Town. I could see them everywhere moving. And he used to call that pastor my father. Now because they had a problem between them, he wants to make everybody to become a partaker of their differences by calling media, by calling, by calling press so that he can insult the man that he was working with. He is trying to correct what raised them. When you don't understand grace, leave the grace alone. Am I talking to somebody on this telecast? When you don't understand grace, leave grace alone. Don't fight a man who you know, where, whom you don't know where they came from. Some men before they came to where they are today, they have gone through fire. Some of them they have seen hell and back. Some of them they have died and they are back. Some of them they are living on bonus. The life they live, God has just borrowed them. And you want to rise and fight against that grace. The Bible says in anger. When Moses said that let it be known. That if I be not a man of God. And the earth opened up. That is what happens. People who, men who, women who fight men of God. Men who fight a man of God. When you fight a man of God. 
that carry the grace of the place, the land will help the man to fight against you. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm talking to some. The land will help the man to fight against you. Let me give you another scripture. Numbers chapter 26, verse number 10. Numbers chapter 26, verse number 10. Let's read it with you, if you are there. What does it say? What does it say? Numbers chapter 26, verse 10. It says this way. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. With that company died. When the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. Underline the word, and they became a sign. They became a sign so that in, 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 in our country, whenever somebody has been punished, whenever somebody has been punished, they say that let it be a let it be a lesson. Let it be a lesson. So that people who have got a character like that might learn from him or her. The Bible says the land opened up its mouth and swallowed up the men. So number one, the land will vomit us out when we fight against the men who carry the grace of the place. Number two, when they shed innocent blood in the land. Anytime there is innocent blood that has been shed, the land will always vomit its inhabitants. There are people who shed blood because they want properties. There are people who shed blood because they want wealth. There are people who shed blood because they want money. There are people who shed blood because they want land. Let me tell you, the same land that you use, the same land, the same blood that you use to shed so that you can get that position, you cannot sit, the land cannot allow you to sit down and enjoy that position forever. In the book of in the book of Numbers chapter 35, verse 33 to 34. Read with me that one. Today I'm talking about do not give the reason. Do not give the land the reason to vomit you. Numbers 35, 33 to 34. What does he say? He says, So you shall not pollute the land where you are. For blood defies the land, and no atonement can be made for the land. For the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Therefore, do not defile the land which you inhabit in the midst of which I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. When they shed innocent blood, Psalms chapter number 106, verse 38, the scripture says, Psalms 106, the scripture says like this. Psalms 106 verse number 38. Says and shed, and shed innocent blood. The blood of their sons and daughters. Whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted by them. So when the land becomes polluted. When the land becomes polluted. The land vomits out its inhabitants when we shed innocent blood that's why there are some families that we need to stand in the gap and ask god for forgiveness because there is a lot of blood that is crying out for revenge there are government that are ruling because of blood when somebody wants to rise up they have to assassinate the person when somebody wants to become a leader he must be assassinated or they must be sabotaged. And this one has made nobody. The country cannot prosper. There is always pain in the land because the blood of the innocent is crying out for revenge. The land is already polluted. When the land becomes polluted, the land vomits out its inhabitants. The land vomits out its inhabitants. Number three, is when they reject the gospel. When people reject the gospel, the land vomits out those people. Let me give you, for example, I want you to check places. I want you to go back to a village. Look at the place where there is no church. Look at the place where there is no gospel preached. 
Look at the place where people will fight so hard to make sure that the gospel is not preached. And that is why war is my country, Kenya, which can be able to open bars and open restaurants, but they do not give opportunity to church to be opened. Because when the gospel is rejected, when the gospel is rejected, Luke chapter 4 verse number 18, For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The only way poverty is broken in a community or in a society is when the gospel is preached. Poverty is a sign that the land is fighting against its inhabitants. Poverty is a sign that the land has vomited out its inhabitants. That's why you'll find that any place that the gospel is not preached, there will be always a lot of crime. There will be a lot of drunkenness. There will be a lot of things that are always happening. Because when the gospel is rejected, the land rejects its inhabitants. Oh, I feel like talking to somebody. Thank you so much, Bishop Chris. Pastor Pius, God bless you. When the gospel is rejected, the land rejects its inhabitants. Let me talk to some of you here. If you follow very closely those families that accepted the gospel, the families that accepted the missionaries, and they housed the missionaries, they took care of the missionaries in early, in early 40s, in early 20s, when the early church was coming in Africa. When those fathers did what they did, look at the families of those people right now. Some of them you'll find they are professors. Some of them you'll find that they are engineers. Some of them are the greatest people on the land. Why? Because when their forefathers accepted the gospel, the gospel became a healing of their land and the land was delivered from scarcity. But look unto the families that fought preachers so hard. That's why let me tell you, if you cannot give, leave those who can give alone. If you cannot give, I'm talking to a journalist. I'm talking to a CS. I'm talking to a cabinet minister. I'm talking to a leader somewhere who always stands up and incites pastors and talks against pastors and talks against preaching. You need to understand the greatest medicine to a nation is the gospel. If the gospel is not preached, gossip will prevail. I think I'm speaking something. If the gospel is not preached, gossip will prevail in the land. And where there is gossip, there is assassination. Where there is gossip, there is sabotage. Where there is gossip, there is betrayal. Where there is gossip, there is there are a lot of things that happen. But when the gospel is preached, people they live an orderly life. People respect themselves. People they live a decent life because the gospel transformed its inhabitants. Even the land itself understands. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt. Of the soil, you are the. Let me tell you, uh, 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 you cannot eat a meal that is a meal that a meal that doesn't have salt is a tasteless meal. The art without the gospel, the art is tasteless. You cannot enjoy your life on earth when there is no gospel. And that is why Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Then number two, to deliver the year of delivery. Somebody give me Luke chapter 4 verse 8. Mili, you are doing a good work there. God bless you. Luke chapter 4 verse 8. Let us do this Bible study together, please. Mili, let's do it. Luke chapter 4 verse 8. What does he say? Luke chapter 4 verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
Hallelujah. So which means poverty is elevated when the gospel is preached. Poverty cannot be poverty cannot eradicate cannot be eradicated by handouts. Poverty cannot be eradicated by politicians. Poverty cannot be eradicated by people receiving sugar and milk. But the only solution, the only way to break the spirit of poverty is when the gospel is preached. Because poverty is a spirit that darkens the minds of people so that they can think beyond their today. To preach the gospel to Papua, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. When you receive the gospel, your heart that was broken hearted becomes healed. Some of us would have committed suicide a long time ago. I always tell people I was a serious, I was a serious criminal, a leader of Ninja 5 group. Those who watch Ninja movies, they understand what I'm saying. I was a leader of one of those groups. 42 brothers, I was one of the leaders, commando. I could walk by night without being afraid. One of my friends, most of them, they were shot by bullet. They died. Immediately I gave the life. Immediately I gave my life to Christ. The only solution that can break crime in communities is when the gospel is preached. When the gospel is preached to the criminals, they surrender their guns. When the gospel is preached to those drug dealers, they surrender their drugs. When the gospel is preached to thieves, they stop stealing, they come to church. The gospel is the solution to the land. The gospel changes prostitutes. The gospel changes those people who are tied up. The gospel breaks homosexuality and lesbianship. When the gospel is preached, the land can breathe. Somebody say amen. So, when, the, when they reject the gospel, people who reject the gospel, they don't live a peaceful life. Witches make their home a pounding back. Witches run that home day and night. Nothing ever happens. They fight all night. Other people are sleeping, but in this home, there are a lot of screams. There are a lot of screams. Why? Because when people reject the gospel, when people reject the gospel, I went to preach to a particular community in South Africa. The old man does not want anything to do with the gospel. When they reject the gospel, the land rejects them because the only thing that can, in, can be induced in the land to give it peace is when the gospel is preached. It's the gospel preached. You must accept the gospel in your family. You must accept the gospel to your loved ones. You must accept the gospel. If you have not yet read to anybody, you must find a way to reach them so that they can hear the good news of the kingdom of God. I used to go to a particular office, a lawyer's office every Friday. We used just to pray, then we leave. So one time I gave him a suggestion. I told him, what if every December we can be able to find even if we can do a budget of two of two twenty two thousand dollars, and then we can be able to plan, we take the gospel into a village. The man saw the idea was good, so we started with a budget of two hundred thousand. That is two hundred two thousand dollars. We went to his village. We did the first crusade. The first crusade. We did not have strong instruments, but at least we had something on the ground. We did not have good preachers but we had something that had never been there before now what happened while we were preaching a man who was one of the secular musician by the name sukuma binonga got born again in that crusade this man he started singing in the days of the youth of my father he gave his life to christ and he got born again to that crusade he got born again to that crusade. The following year, we did another crusade. A witch came with these paraphernalia and he handed them over to the crusade and he got born again. From that day onwards, people in that community starting, started seeing light because when the gospel is preached, light is released. 
So the second thing that happens is this, is when people reject the gospel, when people reject the gospel, the land rejects them. Then number four, when they fight the house of God, there are people who are good in fighting the house of God. When they fight the house of God, when they fight the house of God, there is a man somewhere in the country called Uganda. This man, he gave this pastor land. In fact, when he came to the church, the pastor was the pastor was in a very small place and the pastor was preaching. The pastor was doing the work of God. Then this man, he had his own agenda. But because the pastor knew that he had gotten a man who will stand with him in the ministry, the pastor accommodated him. When the pastor accommodated the guy, they started working together and the man grew, the church grew. Then the man gave a place for the church to be built. When the church was built, the, he needs to go back to the pastor so that he can ask for forgiveness. The man had cancer. The man had diabetic. The man was suffering. So the pastor went and prayed for him and the man got forgiven of his sins and the man got recovered. Some battles people bring upon themselves by fighting the house of God. Let me tell you, there are two things that you should never bring to your house. Don't bring the battles of the church into your house. And don't bring the battles of the pastor into your house. If you've got, you got problems in your house, don't bring your pastor into those battles. If you've got battles with your business, don't make the church to be the part and parcel of your problem. There are people who will begin to feel, oh, it is because of that church that I'm going to. That church is a devil worshipping church. That church does not worship a true God. Since I joined that church, my things are not working well. Let me tell you, whenever you fight the church, you are fighting the house of God. And the God of the house knows how to fight for himself. So when they fight the house of God, God will always fight the battle himself. When they fight the house of God, don't bring your battles into the house of God. Leave your battles with them in your house. Because if you can understand, it is only God that knows how to fight his battles. And if you can be able to fight your battles on your own without trying to bring in men of God, then God will be able to fight his battles on his own. So when they fight the house of God, then God begins to fight against them. Number four, when they fight the house of God, that one, let me talk a little bit, when they fight the house of God. When God gives you a position, don't use that position to fight a church. Don't use it to grab the land of the church. In fact, Muslims are more wiser than Christians. If a Christian is given a position in the government, a Christian will use that position to fight Christians. <laughs> Can I say that one again? If a Christian finds a position in government, in fact, they will pray so hard. They will come to us, pastors, pray for me so that I can get this post. But the moment they get that post, they don't help Christians. They use that position to fight the church. But a Muslim, when he gets a position in government, they will use that position to protect the Muslims or to protect the interest of the mosque. And that is why when Christians who have been in government positions, when they leave those positions, their life is never well because they use that position to, especially those who use their post to fight the land, to fight the house of God. The land rejects them. Even some of them when they die, we don't know how they are buried. We don't know how they die. Because when you are in your, that position, you never used it to protect the interests 
of the church. May there be Nehemiahs that God will raise in this position. Why is it that a particular president in a particular country can stand and protect the interest of the church? Because when you protect the interest of God, the God of the soil has got a way to protect his people. Let the mocker smoke. Let those who want to say what they want to say, say. But the truth of the matter is, the God of the man will prove all people that are mocking to be liars. So when they fight the church, number five, when they stop giving, when they stop giving tithes and offerings, when they stop giving tithes and offerings, the land vomits them out. Somebody read for me Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 and 12. When they stop giving, the moment you stop giving, it is your giving that waters the land. It is your giving that feeds the land. It is your giving that sustains the land. But when you stop giving, the land considers you to be useless. When they stop giving tithes and offering, Malachi chapter 3 verse number 8, will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring the whole tithes into the storehouse, that they there be food in the house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive. Verse number 11, watch very carefully. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. Verse number 12. And all the nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord. But when you stop giving your tithes and offerings, the land stops producing for you. Because when you stop giving, it is a way of opening a door for the devourer. And when the devourer invades your territory, he swallows up everything that belongs to you. No matter the condition, there is a lady I met, she told me, I don't touch my tithe because I know the tithe belongs to God. May God raise up loyal people that will understand that no matter the circumstance, you know, let me tell you, children of God, maybe I'm only talking to one person, but that one person will spread this to God. This thing that people are saying that your pastor is checking on you, are you, no, you, are you, is your pastor checking on you? Is your pastor checking on you during this COVID-19? Let us go back to the principles of honor. The priests, their responsibility is to be on the altar. Their work is to pray for the nation. Their work is to make sure that the needs of the people are presented before God. And if there is anybody who has got a need their responsibility is to look for the priest. That's why Anna went to the temple. Uh, Jesus, when he was born, he was taken to the temple. We have got men like Simeon. We have got people like uh, Cornelius because they were people who were ordained for the sake of the altar. And whatever they received from God, they could speak it to the people. The issue of visitation it has got nothing to do with a biblical principle that God established in his word. 
The issue with the visitation is a, a colonial terminology that came through visitation or pastoral work. And that is why we need to understand that when every one of us is in their right place of assignment, blessings are going to locate us there. We must be able to know where God has prophetically positioned us. And when we fail to play our role, because our role is to bring our tithes and offering. And when the priest takes them on the altar, the Bible says, then the land will not reject us, but the land will receive us. So when they stop giving, then the land will stop producing. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse number 8, See, I have given you this land. Go in and possess it. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse number 26. If you are there, please just put the scripture for me on the screen. It says that the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse number 16. He says, First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 26. What does he say? For the earth is the Lord's and its fullness. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness. Numbers chapter number 35 verse 53. It says, I have given you the land. Go in and. Number seven up to the rest. The reason why the land may reject us. I want you not to miss tomorrow because God wants to deposit something into your life. The things that I've said today that cause the land to reject us. Number one, I've said when they fight the men that carry the grass of the land. Maybe you had an issue with the pastor. You had an issue with the man of God and you feel there is something that you did against them. You need to repent. You need to find a way to reconcile with them so that the land do not vomit you. Number two is when they shed innocent blood. Is when they shed innocent blood. Number three, I have said, is when they reject the gospel. When they reject the gospel. Number four is when they fight the house of God. Number five is when they stop giving. When they stop giving. When they stop giving. When they stop giving. So those five points are going to help you. Tomorrow we are going to pick up until we come to the end. But I want you to understand this. That God has given you a responsibility. And that responsibility is to make the land profitable. Is to make the land to be a place that everybody can enjoy. Let's believe and pray. But before we pray, maybe you have got an offering that you want to give. You have got something that you want to offer to the Lord. I want to pray with you. For those who are in South Africa, you can use that number on your screen through an Mpesa or Mama. There is, a, there, is, there, is a, there is something that they call Mama there or Western Union and the Lord will greatly bless you. If you are in America, you can use Wave and the Lord will greatly bless you. If you are around, you can give through an Mpesa through the number on your screen. All 721 540-845. Let's pray. Father, we pray that the land will not vomit us again. We want to pray that anything that is in the land that might make us to be vomited out, I pray that, Lord, my Father, you forgive us. If there is any sin that you have committed against you, that, Lord, may make you be angry. Any person that, Lord, you have put in a higher position, but they have used that position to fight against your house. I pray that you forgive them. I pray that you heal every one of us. We give you the glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. You have not given your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Forgive all my sins. I surrender my life unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
God bless you. See you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. We'll be having an evening service. And uh, I want to believe that the Lord is going to bless us. Thank you. And have a great evening. Amen.